Direct Connection is made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities and is made possible by the generous support of our members. Thank you. Live from Maryland Public Television, this is Direct Connection with Falcon. Hi, everybody. Thanks for tuning in for Direct Connection. The closely watched college rankings by U.S. News & World Report can make or break a school's marketing efforts. Well, for the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, the magazine News this year, ranking UMBC number one on its list of up-and-coming national universities. Joining us now is UMBC President Freeman Rabowski. Sir, thank you for being here. Thank you, Jeff. Great to be here. And congratulations. That's a pretty big deal. Very exciting time for a lot of... If you look at that list, you'll see other great institutions. University of Southern California, UCAL San Diego, George Mason, great places. And what's exciting is that not only did they name us number one among that group, they placed us in two very prestigious categories beyond that group. The first involved a commitment to undergraduate education, to teaching. And the list started with Dartmouth, and then Princeton, Yale, and then tied for fourth place in the nation was UMBC, tied with Stanford University. We were delighted. And the category was top 20 institutions in undergraduate research and creative projects. The list started with Caltech, it ended with Williams, and in the middle, UMBC. So I took a look at your website yes. and uh, was not surprised at all to see a, a big mention of this. <laughs> yes. Um, what, what's the act of that? Because obviously the sure. school has had, uh, most people are familiar with it, a growing reputation right. uh, in the state. Um, but maybe beyond the state, not so much. Sure. Uh, believe it or not, we now have students from 120, 150 countries and every city union. But the significance is that this recognition says that presidents and provosts are looking at what we're doing. They are respectful of the work. Who would not be impressed with the fact that between 40 and 45 percent of our students go immediately to graduate and professional school around the country and in, in other countries, quite frankly. But I think it's important for the state of Maryland because what it says is that all of the work that's being done by our elected officials, beginning with Governor O'Malley and with other elected officials uh, uh, at every level, that work makes a difference. The that they've placed in higher education, their understanding that there's a connection between higher education, economic development, and the image of the state, all those things work together. That work and that understanding have made a big difference. And UMBC has been growing. We're 45 years old. Imagine an institution 45 years old being tied with Stanford. Go figure. I mean, it's a great story about Maryland caring about higher education. Well, and the discussion about funding brings us to what's happening now with the state budget. Yes. Uh, obviously, tight budgets around the country. Sure. In Maryland, we just had another big round of right. higher education uh, affected mm -hmm. by that uh, a bit, right. um, as with the previous round. What's it mean to your campus? I'll be very honest. I mean, obviously, any budget cut can be difficult, and it is difficult. We have to manage that cut, though. But most of it, I would say this, the governor, working with the legislature again, has worked to protect higher education in Maryland in a way that we rarely see in this country at this time. If you go, as I'm around the country, with colleges and universities from the West Coast to the South, I'm seeing places cut far more substantially than we are being cut, given our proportion of the budget. The most important point is that I believe the leaders of this state understand that it's taken a lot to build us to this point, and they want to make sure they protect us as much as possible during the difficult time. And the governor credit for keeping tuition down. We've frozen tuition for several years to make higher education more accessible because he understands and legislators understand that the more educated the people in the state, the better they will do in jobs, the more taxes we'll have, and the more prosperous the state will be. Are you on the question of whether, whether or not it's time for tuition to go up a little bit? to preserve quality while you know, state funds are being cut? I accept what the governor has said, and, and that's because I do know that families are struggling right now, and we are working to work with the state to manage the cuts 
And for this next year, we again have families not having more money to pay. What the future holds, we don't know. We have to see how the economy goes. I'm sure everybody would say the same thing. I don't know how much time you get to spend on admissions and, and financial aid, mm -hmm. um, but, but what's the picture? I mean, we, we hear from some colleges that uh, you're, you're seeing more students uh, in, in increasing financial difficulty, filing financial aid right. appeals because right. a parent has been laid off sure. uh, or what have you. T to what degree are you able to respond to that? First, enrollments at our institution are very robust. Uh, we've got more new students than ever, uh, including transfer students, but also, I mean, it's significant that the graduate enrollments look good this year. So the enrollment is good. Now, what does that mean? In order for them to register, the student has to pay the bill. So I'm saying families have already paid those bills. Now, we always have families that need help, and we're working to help those families. Um, and that means sometimes helping them with financial aid. It means sometimes helping them to find a job on campus. In other cases, it means helping get a job in the, in the region. And that's one of the advantages of the Baltimore-Washington corridor. There are a lot of jobs we can help connect people to. And we work as a university to have great relationships with employers for part-time work for students as well as full-time. What, what gets somebody into UMBC? Uh, the, uh, a big institution looks sure. closely at uh, test scores, test scores grades. And, and grades in high school. Oh, yeah, and clearly we have high achievers. I mean, we, UMBC is a place for smart students. Make no mistake about it. It's a place where it's cool to be smart. The life of the mind is very active on our campus. You know about the chess team, but you may not know about the bioethics team or the model United Nations team or the mini Baja for the races and engineering team or the environmental or the biodiesel fuel uh, club. All these are clubs. So th this is why you didn't make number one on the party. Oh, no, we would not make it on that. But we also <laughs> great in athletics. You know, we went to the championship for our conference again in basketball, and we won our conference again in lacrosse. We did really well and won a conference champ championship in swimming. So athletics um, going really well. Academics, everyone knows the people who come to UMBC want a great education and they're willing and, and ready to work hard and they do. And it shows because when I'm at Stanford, when I'm at Harvard, when I'm at Duke, when I'm at the University of Pennsylvania, when I'm over at Hopkins or the Maryland Medical School, faculty tell me all the When they're talking about UMBC students and, and our graduates, well prepared. I get emails from students around from Cambridge University to Berkeley saying, Doc, well prepared. The faculty, I mean, what's at the heart of a university? The faculty, committed staff members who really care about those students, faculty who are the best in their fields. What makes us special, I believe, is that we have research faculty who care deeply, not just about grad students, but about undergraduates. And, and we've started a lot of initiatives, living, learning classroom, I mean, floors and, and, and opportunities for people in groups and a chemistry discovery center that focuses on collaboration. And so students are able to succeed and it makes all the difference in the world. What, what's the path? If, if you had to draw a roadmap for somebody running an institution and you've yes. been in this job for 17 or 18 years yeah, now, 19, whatever that um, is. How do you get from there to here or from here to, to where you're going? Right. And it, it, it seems to me, and I can say this, you can't, there's a certain um, element of star power <laughs> that, um, that makes this all work at, at you. But you've also had a focus. I mean, you weren't a liberal arts focused right. institution, you went after the sciences. Well, you should Is know that right? I mean, it's And not, I know you have great liberal I arts. I love your right. saying that so I can say, no, it's not right. <laughs> we start with a very strong array of liberal arts programs in the arts and human social sciences and science and engineering. But every student gets great, a great education in the liberal arts and in arts and humanities. And most important, more than half of our students are in the arts and humanities and social sciences. We send plenty of students on to law school. We have a lot of students who are and social workers, in addition to the scientists and engineers. Let's take some phone calls. Sure. If you have a question for Dr. Rabowski, you can give us a call. We'll keep the number on the screen. Tom from Montgomery County, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to thank the doctor because my son went to school about seven years ago, graduated with honors, and now is at uh, the Baltimore Law School. And I just wanted to thank you for the great job that UMBC did. 
Thank you so much. We appreciate those, those grateful parents. The people who help us recruit more than anybody else are graduates and their families. They can say, my son or daughter came to this place, or I went to this place, look at what I'm doing now. I want my younger brother or sister or my younger son or daughter to go there. And so we've got pipelines of families who come. That's the best news you can hear. And the people, quite frankly, who are most competitive in us recruit are people in the best of graduate schools in the country because they can say, we are well prepared. All people who work at North of Grumman or Lockheed Martin, T. Will Price, Constellation, all those places, those students and the employers will say, well done. How do you feel about the SAT, the Scholastic Aptitude? We're seeing um, more universities, some with big names, that are making that optional for, right. for kids with a certain GPA right. or, or for everybody and sure. just looking at the record apart from this test that is sometimes criticized. Um, do you have any qualms about that test? I don't. I think that it's important to be able to test students and to know that they can read well and compute and think critically. And the test does just that. Is it the solution to all of our problems? Can it tell us everything? No, no. And there's a range that might be acceptable, but a combination of grades and test scores and understanding more about the student's background, all those things will be very important. But let me say it to people this way. Uh, when you're getting ready to go into the surgical room, to the operating room, and a doctor looked you in the face and said, I like people, I had great grades, but I didn't pass the test. We won't let them operate on us. You have to have ways of knowing that people know certain things. And so it's not that it's all that's necessary, uh, but it is, a, it is a part of what you need in order to get things done. It may not be sufficient, but it's necessary. You also need to know that students can write well, and the SAT looks at that too. We need to have ways, by the way, of helping people to prepare for the test. I will right. say that, that the more advantaged the family, the greater the chances they will have opportunities for students to prepare. We need to help people who don't have those opportunities so they can read well. And as a mathematician, I will tell you, when people say, oh, you're teaching to the test, if you can learn how to do certain kinds of problems and have the practice, you can do okay on that test. But you have to be able to read well. Lynn from uh, Baltimore City. Lynn, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm just curious as to uh, where you advertise for faculty since it doesn't seem to be available to Chronicle of Our Education and places like that. Do they come from the University of Maryland to your school directly? Is that what's going on? Uh, this is faculty? Faculty positions? Faculty positions. Okay, Actually, we, we are not doing a lot of hiring these days, and the good news is that the best people want to stay. So we don't do a lot of hiring. Um, and if you uh, send something to the Department of Human Resources, they can let you know what is available. Or if you find, you can find what we have. But I mean, the good news for UMBC is that for any position that we advertise, you're going to have just large numbers of people from around the country applying for those positions. What, what makes somebody a good, do you, when you're hiring uh, star right, faculty, right. Um, do you care more about research or, or how they're going to do it, with an undergraduate class? I would say that great researchers more and more these days are pulling students into the work. On our campus, the research faculty, the research high recognition is teaching and research are intertwined. Well, they're talking about in literature uh, or in science, that uh, we have a journal of undergraduate research that is run by students and, and faculty or advisors, and these students are searched in this country and beyond in a variety of disciplines, in the social sciences, in the humanities, and faculty are working with them. Well, that's teaching also. So teaching is not only standing in front of a class. I mean, much of the great teaching we do involves technology and group work and collaboration and research in lab, theater, in the dance studio. And so we talk about the two hand in hand. We want people who are the best in their disciplines as scholars who are interested in working with students, both undergraduate and graduates. And we get people from a country, from the largest research universities like the University of Michigan to wonderful liberal arts colleges who come to UMBC to look at our model to see how and why we are able to do so well. I've been out of the classroom for uh, too long now, but is it still the same in, in that freshman or doctory 101 right. level course? Uh -huh. Is it still the gigantic lecture hall not and necessarily. And a bunch of sleepy kids. No, you heard me saying chemistry discovery center. Much of the work is done in a lab with 
computers and with students working in groups of five and having a role to play the master computer that the faculty member is able to see what people are doing and it's more facilitating the knowledge development process than just simply lecturing. In other cases, it's the Socratic method. Uh, and what I'm really proud of is that we've had faculty who got there in the first 20 years who were from the best universities in the country who came to build that institution. And I mean, I've been there now 23 years, since 87, 22, 23 years. But for 20 years before I got there, faculty in history and philosophy, our chemistry, were working to build the place. And so it's not a new phenomenon. These are people who have given their lives to thinking about how you bring together concepts of interdisciplinarity and collaboration among students and working with technology and believing in the building of to make this happen. So it's, a, it's an idea whose time has come. All those things we hear about from a lot of people, but at UMBC, people in the 60s and 70s were being rebellious working on some of those projects. What we've done is to be able to bring in better and better students uh, and to get resources from the state, leverage those resources, resources from national agencies. We are second in funding from NASA in the country. Uh, literally, and so we have a joint center in Earth Systems Technology and a joint system in uh, a center in astrophysics, for example. We have a major center in history education for preparing them. We do a lot in languages, and so it is a rich university where um, people focus on ideas. And from my perspective, most important, we care deeply about students. Are we perfect? No. Of course we make mistakes, of course there are problems, but I'm saying, okay, what's the problem? What's the mistake? Let's work on it. Let's get better and better. My colleagues are saying, we'll take this national recognition, not to sit back and say, oh, aren't we great? But no, to say, yeah, we're good, but success is never final. We can be much better. And that, that's the point. You told me before that when the, when the freshmen show up this time of year, you think of the college president the way they thought of the school principal, yeah. who was generally not somebody you wanted to have a lot of contact with. <laughs> <laughs> well, people think about discipline actions or disciplinary right. actions in high schools. I, and I enjoy going to school systems around the state and, and, and spending time with children. But I will say this, that I was in a lecture, in a discussion today. We are all discussing the book Three Cups of Tea. And all new students were to read the book. And we had discussions, and I was in one of those. And the students really loved really going at it with me because they had one point of view and another, and we were talking about how people view Americans. And now, if you can imagine talking about the Pakistani and having students who are Americans but who have Pakistani backgrounds in the room with people from this state, uh, all discussing how we view our country and whether or not we perhaps want to look at how to build stronger relationships with other countries, and how there can be arrogance on both sides, from other countries and from us, and the need to listen to each other. Well, in the midst of that conversation, somebody said, wow, we're really arguing with the president. Yeah, <laughs> well, everybody has a right to a point of view. So universities are places, or should be places, where students can be taught to think critically, to question anything, quite frankly, and to learn how even to agree to disagree, to agree to disagree agreeably. <laughs> well said. David, uh, David in Baltimore. David, thanks for calling. Go ahead. How many qualified Maryland students do you uh, turn away in order to take students from overseas? Uh, the students we have from overseas at the undergrad level, when we say 150 countries, primarily are Americans now who came to this country. So they you're are not, Americans. I looked it up. You're 90% in-state yeah, kids. But in-state, for the undergraduate programs, um, we are very focused on Maryland residents, and 90% of the students are from Maryland, and others are from other states, particularly New York, New Jersey, about 10%. You know, when we talk about the 150 countries they'll represent it, that is, they've had that kind of background, but most of those students are now Americans. Yeah, I'm thinking about uh, some schools, uh, UNC Chapel Hill, uh, I think the state legislature put a cap on the number of out-of-state right. students, but, but the cap's a lot, it's higher than where you are, it's right. maybe 17%. Right. Yeah, so we're doing fine. And, and besides, they, they pay full freight, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We are, we are, I mean, we have the highest percent of students who graduate in science and engineering in the state for public universities. 45% of our bachelors graduate in engineering as a discipline, 55% in other disciplines. At the doctoral level, it's higher. But the fact is, for undergraduates, um, we are, Americans. It is what I would call the new America because we have so many people from other countries who become Americans. And I think it's wonderful that because it teaches us how people have come to this country throughout the 20th century 
and been hungry for the knowledge, appreciative of what we have in this country to give. And it helps people who've been there for generations to say, we need to appreciate our country. Absolutely. Uh, Tam Carroll County, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Um, yes, wanted to get your feedback. What type of guidance would you give parents who, I have two children, six and eight, when you talk about arts and, and sciences and math, what are some of the things we could be today to prepare them for both high school education as well as college education? Well, great question. Great Thank question. you so much. Number one, and I speak as a math teacher, reading is critical. As much as you can do to read to them, read with them, have them reading aloud, appreciating language, mm -hmm. important. Secondly, word problems, story problems. I would get either educational software or games that will allow them to, to, to focus on mathematics in real life through word problems because the more they develop their language skills, the more comfortable they will be with problems. And then third, for children, Legos, I mean, maps, puzzles, Legos uh, will build curiosity. And finally, I would, I, I, I play classical piano. I always found the arts very helpful. The music was very helpful, uh, music, music lessons or lessons in art. And so I'm a strong believer that we need to teach children to be broad in their education from art, painting, drawing, music, instruments, it all teaches discipline and appreciation. And, and the other point that uh, having a mom who's caring enough to pull in and ask that question. That's exactly right, is so, so important. Far. And yeah. encourage the curiosity, very important. Let them ask as many questions as possible. You don't have to know the answer, just say, let's go find it ourselves, let's go Google it. All right, so we've talked about this highfalutin education stuff. In your heart of heart, you want to have a football team? <laughs> <laughs> My students say that our rugby team, our men's rugby and women's rugby teams are our football. Um, I believe you have to decide what you do well and focus on it. And our conference, which includes Boston U, University of Vermont, some of the students, uh, uh, that conference has decided that the two uh, most critical sports for us are basketball and lacrosse. You see schools, I mean, it, it, it sounds like a joke that, you know, athletics are just just for fun. Right. Uh, but there are schools that have gotten a tremendous lead from a, uh, a strong basketball performance. Yeah. You, yeah. you make the final four, sure. it's the kind of lift that you're probably going to get out of the, this U.S. News and World it's, Report uh, it, ranking. Well, you know what? When we made the championship, uh, we're on our conference championship in basketball and went to the NCAA and played Georgia kept it within 20 points. This is this nerd talking now, right? Um, we got an incredible article by Boswell in the Washington Post. I got calls from all over the country saying congratulations because what he said was respectable basketball and great academics. Right. When we go to the championship in lacrosse and do so well and then go to the NC and almost beat Chapel Hill, big deal. We're on our way there, you know, and great coaches, Monroe and Zimmerman, great students. And the other part that's significant about UMBC, those students graduate and they're well prepared academically. I had large numbers to graduate from the lacrosse team this year and from back, and they go on to good stuff when they leave. Lynn, uh, Fairfax, Virginia, thank you for calling. Go ahead. Um, yes, I want to know how you feel about uh, students who take a gap year between high school and college. Why, why do you ask? if I may ask. Um, my son is taking a, a gap year, and a lot of colleges will not accept the fact that he's taken a year off between high school and college. Interesting, thank you. I, I, I honestly, and this is a personal belief, I think that a, a student and his or her parents have the right responsibility to think about whether or not that year is necessary. And if you feel that he needs that chance to travel, to work, to mature, or just not to be burned out, I think it's perfectly reasonable. As long as you keep talking to him, preparing him or her by preparing early to get into the institution of choice, and during that year to make sure some things that are constructive are going on. It could be a great work experience, reading some things, and so on. No, I've seen a lot of students who've had that year to do things, to travel to Israel and work for a while. Some will stay in this country and work, and they come back, and sometimes they're even more mature. Everybody isn't ready to start college immediately after high school. Where are you on uh, online education? We've talked about all this hands-on sure. stuff in sure. the labs. Sure. Um, 
I guess there, there's evidence that, that you could learn in front of a computer. Can you learn as well? Is, you can. Is the that research, something you want to do more of? Well, we do more of it in certain disciplines there right now. And what we're going to see more in the future will be hybrid courses, where some of the course may be online, some of it will be face-to-face, -face, back and forth. So it's that old 300-person lecture hall I'm thinking of. No, more that, and more you're going to see technology right. used in so many ways. I'll give you a funny story. Uh, the U.S. News and World Report uh, went out, came out 1201. Everybody knew it was going to come out 1201. Or well, the next morning, some people were just beginning to get the information. Well, the students had gone online at 1201, and some of my faculty colleagues and staff, and so people had been doing things with Facebook and Twittering all night long. So I was getting wonderful emails from people out in California, I mean, well before 6 and 5 morning, because people had been, and so we see that people are learning and communicating 24 hours a day. It's a very different world, and we'll see more and more teaching and learning going on exactly that yeah, way. Yeah, my, my thought is I'd rather have you teaching me mathematics, right. even if it was on videotape, right, right. than probably 50% of the people who were teaching it yeah, yeah. in person. I mean, it would depend on, on what it was and right. how much you needed a lab and so forth. Sure. I think it will be, we'll see more and more of a combination. We really yeah. will. And we'll see people looking at ways of explaining concepts more clearly and working great teachers. And that's what I'm telling you. You come there, you'll see some exciting people teaching everything from Greek, Greek and Latin to wonderful courses in biochemistry. Let's squeeze in a quick call. Lee in Washington, D.C. Lee, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Yes, I just wanted to applaud Vavosky for not only changing and challenging minds, but changing hearts. And for all the students that he has touched, uh, continue to do the good work. Thanks very much. Good place to end it. What's next for you? I, I want to continue to build strong relationships with people. Uh, I really mean that. I think that sticking around UMBC. For I, a while, listen, I love here. UMBC. I plan to be exactly where I am. I am determined to uh, be with my colleagues and students because run deeply, you, and you see the difference. And I, my colleagues, people have given their lives to UMBC, and you see the difference. They believe in the place. We believe in our students, and the nation is saying, "Well done." Well. Well done. Dr. Freeman Rabowski, president of UMBC, thank you for being here. Thank you. We're back Thursday night with Your Money and Business, and then Friday with State Circle. Updates on all of our programs on our website at mpt.org. For all of us at MPT, I'm Jeff Salkin. Thanks for watching, and have a good night. This program was made by MPT to serve all of our diverse communities. Preview and support our programs at mpt.org slash real changes.